Hey everybody, welcome back. This is a little battle I decided to bring to you guys where uh, I actually got six kills, as you can see by the asterisk in the title that was on purpose. It's because the first three kills were the AI bow fighters on Norway, which is why I'm fast forwarding. There's nothing wrong with your computer or your YouTube. We're fast forwarding to get to the bow fighters, and then uh, all the action picks up right after that, so that's what's going on. I did not go after the B-25 because our guys were on it, and I didn't go after the two B-17s you might have seen there either because, well, I got in on the bow fighters. I had a Lion Booster turned on. All right, we're back to normal speed. I had a Lion Booster turned on, and uh, really the bow fighters on this map with a premium plane, they are huge payouts. So that's why I went in for them. So I kind of get a double, double shot right here on them pretty conveniently. Now I'm taking some hits by a Spitfire right behind me. And I really thought that this battle was going to be over because I didn't think I was going to get away from the Spitfire. So I dove to try and run for A to get to friendly AAA because there were no friendly planes near me. I thought the Spitfire would dive down and chase me down. However, for whatever reason, he didn't follow me down. So as I'm heading down to A to get to friendly AAA cover, I spy a B-25 shooting up the AAA. I did know he was there, I had seen him getting AAA scores, but he didn't get the 10 or 15 and the AAA at our bases were not firing in the air. So I knew he had to be at the A point. Now I'm not one to turn away a free medium bomber juicy target, especially when I'm flying a specifically designed bomber killer fighter, so I dove in on him and decided to stop him from destroying my friendly AAA because I kind of needed it. I sprayed a little bit there, but did get some good hits and then finished him off. And there's the first real kill. Now I can see a fighter coming in behind me on the map, which I thought was the guy that was chasing me, but the guy that was chasing me initially is Marrow Jack there to the left. It turned out it was a P-47. I was able to just barely turn inside of him. Now I am still thinking that like this battle is basically over. I'm trying to get as much score as I possibly can before I get shot down here. The P-47 is all over me, and I realize I'm going to get a good passing shot on the Spitfire. This is the guy that initially hit me, so... Blow his tail off, and there's my second kill, and this battle is suddenly looking a lot better than it was going to in the first place. Now, the P-47 is still on me tight. He just broke his flaps trying to turn with me, because he was going a lot faster than I was. My plane's got some pretty serious damage here, and I just barely outturn him. I'm trying to get turned back around on him as I just barely, just barely clear the roofs of these houses here. And he's either out of ammo or damaged enough or just decided to break off from the attack and head back away to extend some distance. But I decided to let him know that uh, continuing away from me would be a good idea. Peppered a bunch of shots at him. Till I ran out of extra, ran out of ammo in the high velocity 30s. And just shot a whole bunch at him. Now my engines are starting to overheat and quit here. And I can see that I'm losing speed. So I'm going to turn around in a second and head back towards the airfield. Once I realize that he's far enough away that even if he does turn around, I probably don't have enough ammo to really do. I could, I mean, I've got enough 20 mil ammo to do something about it. But the amount of damage I'm suffering, I'm going to take advantage of him being two kilometers out and try to put her down on the runway. So turn back in and look at the amount of holes in this airplane. It's doubtful this plane would ever fly again after landing here. Thanks. And unfortunately, the enemy team starts capturing A because some of the landing craft made it in close enough to get to the point and start taking it away from us. So I've got enough power in my engines to basically be flyable at uh, low speeds to keep control and get in the landing pattern. But I really need A, so I'm going to make a run on these two landing craft, try to knock them out, and then hope that when I land I can recapture the A point so that I can repair there. Managed to get one and then just barely get the second one which keeps them from capping. I really need to land here really need to land here. There's a second row of landing craft coming in, but I don't really have time to go messing around with them, nor do I have the ammunition with only 220 mil rounds left. To the base. So 
So I'm going to bring her in, realize I'm a little too tight to make the left, right hand turn into the pattern, so I'm going to swing her back around to the left and bring her in. And this landing is kind of funny in my opinion. You'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. Starting to lose some uh, quite a bit of power out of the number two engine and uh, lose quite a bit of speed, so we put the combat flaps down to keep her flyable. Just getting lined up here. Another friendly friendly victory on an enemy fighter there. All good for me. Bringing the gear down, getting kind of slow, and uh, cut the engines to basically be able to stop on the runway. I've got... The, air, the airframe's in pretty good shape, but uh, this was kind of funny here. This is what we call a aggressive flare landing <laughs> in the biz. Set her down okay, though. Didn't break the gear and actually kept it on the concrete. And with the help of the 200 braking rounds that I had left in the 20 mil cannons, I'm able to bring it into a stop. Not too bad, actually. One of the more pleasing landings I've actually pulled off ever, just because of how close I was to blowing the tail off on the uh, end of the runway there. And somehow, even though we don't actually own the airfield, it's repairing me, so... Let the team know that as quickly as possible. And here comes that P-47 again. It's gonna be a race to see whether he gets here in time or whether my uh, repair happens in time. The AAA still belongs to us too until the airfield is actually taken away from us. Now he somehow didn't make a turn in on me, but thankfully my repair happened and basically jumped me, oh, leapfrogged me with him. And I wasn't sure if he was going to cross. He's basically looking like he's going to cross right in front of my guns here. So I did put a few rounds out downrange to see if maybe I could uh, get a lucky kill on him, which would have been a pretty epic moment, I'm not going to lie. Didn't get any hits, and he's too far out of range now, but we've got two friendlies pretty close on him. And the 410 Smug Twingo takes him out. Very thankfully for me. So I'm getting airborne now with just a little bit of ammo gone out of my 20s. Not too bad at all. Battle's going pretty well so far. So I'm going to try to cover my friendlies here. The 335A0 is going to land. The 410 is going to try to land. And the uh, BF-109 here, Kugelblitzen, is going to try to land. We've got a few landing craft coming in that we're going to definitely want to deal with because right now the airfield belongs to us and it's certainly beneficial for us to have it. Now I had all air belts in. I didn't have HVAPs in the MK-103s. So that's why I'm... Um, I was using them just the same because they are high velocity, but I have mining gashos rounds in, not high velocity armor piercings. But I'm using them just the same to try and knock out the landing craft. Managed to bag that landing craft and basically fly through the water spray of his explosion. My mechanics are going to have a hell of a time cleaning all the salt water corrosion out of my engine intakes. They're not going to be very happy with me tonight when they're working all hours of the night to clean those engines out. This P-51 was coming in. I was going to make a climb at him and then realized my speed is a little low, so I built my speed up a little bit and then tried to get some rounds up in front of him just to kind of chase him away and discourage him from coming out. I'm not sure if he actually saw my rounds go in front of him or heard them or anything, but he does actually turn away. Now, I'm not sure if that's because he recognized I was shooting at him or if he was just trying to s climb and circle away from our AAA and wait for us to get away from our airfield and dive again. I don't know, but at any rate, the 335 is airborne again, the 109 has landed, and the 410 is getting ready to land, so I'm up in the air, and if nothing else, even if I can't actually defend our guys, I can at least try to be bait and let our better better fighter type aircraft actually get airborne and do some dogfighting or heavy fighting with the enemy fighters that are left. If any of that makes sense what I just babbled on. So I can see a Spitfire coming in in front of me and I can also see on the mini map there's a dot coming in behind so I'm going to turn around try to get engaged on him. 
And by the time I can get turned around... He's already well past, well high, and well out of my engagement envelope. I'm gonna fall out of the sky if I try to pull up on him. So unfortunately all I can really do is uh, try to get down after him while he goes in and makes a run on our guys on the airfield. Our 410 is crash landed, but he is actually repairing. He did make it safely enough onto the airfield. I'm trying to stay engaged with this P-51 to give our guys enough time to get airborne, but he basically just bypasses me and goes for the easy kills because I can't do much against, against him. Did draw him off at one point. Now, he didn't do a whole lot of real meaningful damage to me, thankfully, there, and I kind of just brought him right to the airfield, but at this point, I'm outmaneuvered in a heavy fighter, and I need the uh, AAA to help me with this P-51. Now, sadly... He gets in and wipes out our 109G2, who we could have really used. But at the cost of AAA setting him on fire pretty well. I couldn't quite get the nose ahead of him enough to pick him off too, or this would have been a real good video. However, he basically crashes right through the, 410, the 410 B6R3. I couldn't quite get a shot on him. I probably would have gotten a assist, if not a kill. And suddenly, I'm still alive and there's only one enemy plane left, along with quite a few friendlies. A little bit of a turn of fortunes here. Now, it shows that the hostile team has lost all vehicles, but that's because the Spitfire has landed on a carrier and is rearming himself and repairing. They haven't actually lost all their vehicles. He's back in because we can tell the tickets have bled out. Now, I know he was on an aircraft carrier just because I know what happened with the battle. But it's where he comes from. I'm trying to climb as much as I possibly can here. Turn an Avenger on, and there he is. 13 clicks out and closing fast. So I'm going to try to get some altitude. He should have to engage on our 335, hopefully, which lets me get a little bit of climb in, get a little bit of altitude that I can trade for speed and possibly uh, evasion maneuvers, try to energy fight an extremely turn-fightable Spitfire. Between myself and the 335 and the 410, we're n it's almost evenly matched with a single Spitfire on the other team. He's way more maneuverable than we are. We've got better firepower. And he knocks out the 335 in a head-on, and I'm going to try to turn and get back towards my 410 so the two of us can work together. Rather than three of us going one-on-one -on -one with a Spitfire, which probably leads to us losing. I'm just hoping that I can keep the Spitfire occupied enough for the 410 V6R3 to get up to enough altitude where he can engage on the Spitfire and hopefully just utterly destroy him. There's one more DO-335 with us, and there he is diving in on the Spitfire now. The Spitfire is going to think better of it and turn and dive away a little bit. However, that's given me enough time to get up to a reasonable amount of altitude here to give myself a little bit of uh, altitude to play with. Spitfire goes down and head on on the 410, knocks him out as well, so now there's a 335 and a 219 A7 left. Not really the best odds against the Spitfire. Our, our, our hope here is basically that he runs out of ammo. As he turns to come head on with me, I get a passing shot in. Managed to bag his left wing, which basically takes away his maneuverability advantage, and he decides that uh, it's not worth trying to continue on with a critted left wing, and he bails out, and that's it. My third player kill, sixth overall aircraft kill of the battle, and we actually pulled off a victory. I did not think, after I was diving away from the Spitfire there, 
that this battle was going to turn out anywhere near as well as it turned out for me. So, like I said, it's a six kill game, but only three of them were real players, but still, not too bad. And the payout with a premium, premium aircraft and a Silver Lion booster, not bad either. So there it is, 14,000 research. And that was without a research booster. So a 15% Lion booster ends up giving me 118,000 research points, or uh, Silver Lions, first place on the team. There's my kill lineup. Not too bad, really. Premium planes are awfully fun to fly. I'm trying to do some more less not premium plane battles for you guys, but dang, they're just so good to fly. Thanks for checking this one out. See you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by.